All right, day. Day five is upon me. What's up guys? It's a little chilly this morning. We're looking at 0.5 degrees or zero degrees outside. That double L for the inside temperature means it's under 32 degrees in here. I'm actually really comfortable where I am right now in the sleeping bag. Got this big thick sleeping bag here. It's like a cloth sleeping bag and a couple wool blankets on top. And I'll leave the body heater on low to conserve propane. Doesn't really need to be that hot in here for sleeping. It was pretty windy last night. It was real windy yesterday. Ended up having a great day yesterday. Let me get this situation taken care of here. Ended up having a great day yesterday with some just awesome friends. Got to fish with those guys. Haven't fished with a few of them for several years. Man, we just we just had a lot of fun. It wasn't it wasn't really about the fishing yesterday. It was about just enjoying each other's company and, and hearing some good stories, telling some good stories, catching some fish while we were at it too. And I looked at her, I said, Do you realize those have not been out of that pocket in 21 years? Are you kidding me? Wow. And she made you come up here on this trip? You are so lucky to have a wife. <laughs> that makes you go fishing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sleeping last night was pretty good. It was windy, so everything's a little noisier and the ice was, it was making ice, so everything was cracking last night too. So didn't get a ton of sleep. Today I am going to kind of ease into the day again, take it easy, maybe go out, catch some of those deep fish and, and work with the electronics a little bit after some togue and white fish. Really get to learn that Garmin pan optics a little bit more. Inside conditions, you can see there's a lot of ice. We, I got a lot of ice on the sides of the walls here. I don't, I just keep the heater on super low at night on the low setting this is the big buddy heater it's got three settings i do that to conserve on propane and also because i really don't need it that hot in here while i'm sleeping as long as everything kind of stays thawed out or close to it thawed enough then it keeps me happy and i can thaw it out if i need some water or coffee or whatever else food for the next day if it's semi thawed out i'm good to go All right, not bad. Probably used three gallons yesterday. It's friggin' cold out here. Woo! Almost, almost cold enough to put gloves on. Oh, wrong one. <laughs>
I'm gonna head out and do some deep water fishing, looking for some white fish and for some togue with the electronics. It is pretty nasty out there. I don't know if you can see all the little wind tornadoes swirling up around. Um, I've been blocked by this kind of hill and wood line last night. Protected me a lot from the wind. It was still ripping, moving the shack around a little bit, but it was way better than if I was on the other shore. Yeah, got some wind to contend with. I'm gonna try to head over to that, that steeper bluff over there and see if there's some deep water near it and see if we could jig some deep water fish for a couple hours. Well, let's go. All right, change of plans. I just took a ride out there, out in the open where I wanted to do some deep water fishing. Got off the sled and the wind just about pushed me across the ice. The wind is howling out there and it's, uh, it's zero degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm not gonna mess around out there. I'm gonna tuck in over here on this shoreline a little bit sheltered from the wind. It's still pretty windy. I'm just gonna set traps for brook trout. So I came back to the shack. I'm gonna get my bait, what's left of my, my shinas, grab my traps and go set up down the shoreline out of the wind at least. And maybe once I get a little bit more courage and if the wind dies down a little bit, then I'll sneak out with electronics and do a little jigging in deeper water while I have four sets in here. That's just pure ignorance out there right now. So we are not doing that. <laughs> Let's get some traps. Right. Yeah, traps. I brought these in last night to thaw them out because they were pretty well frozen. Now, I know they're not thawed out yet, but they're a lot better than they would have been if I didn't bring them in. So that one needs line to hook, so I'm going to leave that baby right home. You can sit here. And we'll see what we got for bait. I think I got a dozen bait in there. I'll take that with me. I got uh, I got crawlers too, but might as well use these shiners. The boys left me with some crawlers yesterday. I got worms. I beg your pardon? All right, new plan. New plan, a little bit better plan, I think. And uh, taint nothing wrong with a native brook trout either. So let's get after them, try it again. bottom. Well, that's too shy. There's a stream flowing in from way back in there, so I figured this would be a good spot for brookies. Apparently I'm too shallow, so let's try further out. All right, new plan. After hitting the bottom on that first one, I know I smoked these blades. So I got an extra set of blades. I thought they were Allen wrench, like the old ones. Um, where are they? But it looks like the head on them is a hexagon head, not Allen wrench. So I didn't bring an adjustable, but I do have a bunch of wrenches that I keep on the snowmobile in my little toolbox. Hopefully one of them's small enough to get on these so I could change these babies out. First thing I gotta do is thaw out this one so I could even get to the screws. I'm gonna pop that battery out cause I 
don't want this thing spinning when I'm messing around with those blades. And I know it's got a safety on the on the trigger and everything, but it's just as easy to pop that out. And I'm not in any rush, because when you start rushing around stuff like this, you could get hurt. So I don't want to mess around at all. Um, sharp blades. First thing I'm going to do is see if any of my wrenches fit these hexagon, these um, these bolts that are holding those blades in there. Looks like that little small one right there might. Let's check the metric first. Okay, that'll do it. It's not, might not be the right one. We'll go with the metric one because I think it'll grab still. So for a metric, I have a eight. It's an eight. Let's see if it'll We'll see if it'll grab them enough to turn them out. Yep. She's do she'll turn them out. Let's see if I can do it away from the blade. Okay. Got it started. I'm away from the blade in case it slipped. Now that it's loosened, I can work anywhere I want. Even though I doled these up, they are still absolute razor blades, so be careful when you're changing yours at home. You know, all it's going to take is one little dull spot to make it not cut good. First one out. Oh yeah. Shit. Wow, look at that. That's not good. That, that. You could feel it rolled right over too. Yep, she toast. All right, one down. There's two blades on this thing. I'm pushing away from the blade, guys. That way, if for some reason the wrench slips off or the bolt breaks or anything like that, and I slip, then I'm, my hand's not going into the blade. If I was here, I could easily, easily slip into that blade. And I'm a long way from a hospital, if you didn't know. But even if you're doing this at home, no one wants a trip to the hospital. Oh man, wow. That's the worst I've ever seen for me. I guess spinning it after I hit bottom was really bad. I don't even know if I could sharpen these. Luckily I pack at least one extra set. So those, uh, those cut for me almost all the last year. So over 2,000 holes and then, you know, they were okay. They were still good after a couple thousand holes, but then when you hit, when you hit bottom like that and it's hard bottom, then you're kind of screwed. Like anything, you get them both lined up, snug them a little bit by hand and then finish them off with a wrench. All right. After a couple holes, I'll check that, but we should be good to go not in love with that center and spike being a little bit dull but tis what it is that's why you don't hit bottom all right we're back in business let's roll yeah i thought it was pretty cold out there we're looking at negative 12 degrees That's how it's supposed to cut. <laughs> oh, she's rolling. Got it. Small, but I got it. Chub. Dang it. Not another chub. We got enough chubs. Well, that's just about the end of day five. It was a pretty slack day today. I caught a couple chubs, had a couple other flags that were probably chubs too. I kept trying to get out deep and, and fish some togue and white fish and use the electronics, but that wind was just ripping and we hit a high of like six degrees today above zero when you throw a 30 mile an hour wind on top of that and the wind chill's pretty, pretty raw. So I didn't last too long out there and the fish really weren't biting. I 
I did run into two people today. I got checked by a game warden. No problems there. Really nice game warden from, I think he's from the southern part of the state and he's stationed up here now. So he's got a pretty good area for, for fishing and ice fishing and not so much for hunting anymore. It used to be a really good hunt area, but not anymore. And then I also got checked by a super nice ranger, I guess, waterway ranger for the Allagash waterway. And just a really, really decent fella and had a great conversation with him. So it was cool running into these guys up here in their backyard, I guess, is where I'm fishing. So yeah, it was good to see them. And yeah, that was about it. Tonight, I'm going to do some more reading. I've been really getting into this uh, logging book about New England logging. Tall trees and tough men. And it's really cool because it's actually talking about the flowage that I'm on, having log drives down these lakes and rivers and this whole area and, and a lot of the history of the area I'm in from almost 200 years ago. So that's pretty cool reading the book on that and got a lot of really other cool information too. So I'm going to finish that book up tonight. Going to eat some beef stew with probably some mashed taters and have a nice warm full belly and hit the sack and hopefully the wind, sounds like the wind's died down like a half hour ago when it got dark. So hopefully the wind dies enough tomorrow where I can get out on the big part of the lake and try to search out some of those lake trout and maybe even a couple whitefish.